Hey everyone, and welcome to this lecture on prevalence and incidence. So first, let's start with definitions to make sure that we're all clear as to the definitions of both prevalence and incidence. So prevalence represents the number of patients with the disease at one point in time. So it's a single slice in time when we're determining how many patients have the disease. One way that they'd like to test prevalence and incidence is asking how a certain change to the disease management or some aspect of the population will change prevalence and incidence. So importantly, the things that will increase prevalence are an increase in incidence, so an increase in the number of new cases, or a longer clinical course, such as a new medication that improves survival, will lead to more patients with the disease living longer, and therefore a larger prevalence. Incidence, on the other hand, is looking at among patients at risk, so among patients who don't already have the disease, how many will develop the disease over a period of time. Things that can increase the incidence of disease are screening campaigns, because screening campaigns are meant to detect new cases of disease. While it will primarily detect early cases of disease that don't have a significant morbidity, it nonetheless will increase incidence. Things that will decrease incidence are primarily forms of primary prevention, such as vaccination campaigns or public health initiatives that prevent individuals from getting the disease in the first place. One way that they like to test prevalence and incidence is by using graphs or charts such as the one below. So in this case, we can see that there are six patients and the line shows the time from when they are initially diagnosed with the disease to when they pass away. So if we were to determine the prevalence at 12 months, what we would do is draw a vertical line at 12 months and say, how many patients are left in the population and how many have the disease. So we see that patient one and patient four have already passed away before 12 months. So at the 12 month mark, there are four total patients and two of them have the disease, patients two and five, and therefore the prevalence at 12 months is two out of four. If we were instead to look at the incidence over the first 12 months, we would say that there are six patients who do not have the disease at the beginning of the period and who therefore are among our at-risk population. And among these six patients, we see that there is one, two, three, four who developed the disease in the first 12 months. And therefore the incidence in the first 12 months is four out of six. I encourage you to get more practice with these concepts with the associated questions with this lecture. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, and good luck.